Attention, please. The June 15th, 2021 annual town meeting for the fine town of Waitley is now in session. Will all residents in attendance please be in order? Thank you. I'm Nat Fortune. I'm your town moderator. And before we proceed to the articles, we have two small matters of business. Uh, we first, we have a dedication of the town report. And then I have a few introductory remarks to orient you towards the uh, warrant and articles you have before you. And for our dedication of the town report, I'd like to call on town Fred Orlowski, please. Please welcome Fred. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. As chairperson of the select board, it's, it's an honor every three years to dedicate a, a town report to an individual that has devoted their time and effort and passion to help the town of Waitley continue as we have. And, and this year's annual report, I'd like to dedicate it to James Ross. I think James is sitting over here. If you uh, get a copy of the report, it's got our picture of our uh, library on the front, and it's got a write-up of James, James Ross in here, what he's done, what he's contributed to the town. I won't read it all. I encourage you to get the report and read it yourself. The one part I'll, I'll just read that uh, he's been involved in several committees, benefiting greatly from his construction experience. Some of the committees he's been involved in is library trustee, Franklin County Cooperative Inspection Program for almost 20 years, chairman of the Conservation Commission for 20 years, a voter registrar, and involved in veterans memorial activities. Uh, and more, more specifics on some of his activities are in the report, so I encourage you to uh, pick up a copy and, and, and read the report. And it's, it's fitting that, that this year's annual meeting, not only some of the Warren articles, but at least the, the cover on the report is about our library, which Jim has dedicated a lot of his time and effort to. So in a way, it's a, it's a tribute to see the write-up plus the picture of the building he's devoted so much time to. Uh, and there's also two, two articles on a warrant this evening that uh, Jim has been directly involved with, the Veterans Memorial and also the library. So you can see that later, later on during the meeting. Uh, the other thing I like to Okay, so uh, Jim, would you like to come up and I'll present the re present the report to you? The other, other quick thing I'd like to mention is, is during this past year, it's been troubling to, to meet, to get things done with the town, uh, to have meetings in person, but we've survived during the, the COVID era. Uh, and I, I guess at, at this time, I'd like to recognize the, the town, some of the town staff that has dedicated their time during this past year, not only in the office, but also outside the office to make sure the town worked and functioned properly. I think some of them are here. I can't see them over there. Uh, Lynn, Lynn Sibley is one of them. Uh, Amy, Amy Schrader, who's over there at the table. And, and, and also uh, Janet Scully. I don't see Janet here today, but that was uh, the, the three staff that have uh, continued to make sure the town functions properly. 
But there's one person that kind of overseeing all of that activity was, was in the offices or at home, working from home every day. We were, we were not without that person. And for that, I'd like to, like to recognize the, the leadership, the strength, the foresight, the, the ability of this person to help this town manage during these difficult times. That person is our town administrator, Brian Domina. Brian, please stand. Okay, and finally, I appreciate all of you showing up here, being at this annual meeting. I think we were, we were here last year and, and uh, survived uh, the one year, and hopefully next year we'll be back to normal operations for town functions. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I wonder if we could also have a round of applause for Fred Olosky for his many years of service. So welcome, everybody. We're here under extraordinary circumstances uh, to do the most extraordinary of tasks. Simply by having registered to vote and showing up today and picking up this card, if you haven't, proceed and pick up right away, you become the legislature for this town. You didn't have to run for office, you didn't have to file papers, you didn't have to campaign, you didn't have to knock on doors, you didn't have to fundraise, you didn't have to be on the ballot. This is as direct democracy as we have in this country, and it's something worth keeping. You, by being here today, constitute the legislature, and you also state that, that you value this system of government, this direct democracy within our town. And so I thank all of you for being here and showing up. Now, because we are the legislature for this town, we only meet on occasion, and we need to empower officers of the town to work on our behalf. And that's why the first five articles here seem somewhat odd that we're going to authorize the use of a bank account and for spending money and, and things like this. But that's because nothing can happen regarding the budget or the legislation of this town without the legislature authorizing it. And so the first five of these articles that empower the select board and treasurer are actually a recognition of this form of government and the town meeting government that we've practiced here since Waitley was founded. Uh, the next items then, six through 30, deal with the financial matters that we as a legislature need to authorize. Six through nine are setting budget and expenses. The remainder are various financial matters, including authorization of transfer of funds from one account to another and to with, between budget accounts. Um, because we have set these up as financial safeguards and our authorization is required for the town to make use of them other than originally allocated. The other thing a legislature does is it passes laws and legislation and declarations. And so for a town, they're called bylaws. And that's why Articles 31 through 38 are about bylaws and designations, including scenic designations coming up here. These have been prepared on our behalf by the many volunteer boards that we have working for us. And now is our chance to hear the justification and ration, the rationale and the uh, implications of these things and to vote to approve or to disapprove. In some cases, a majority vote is required. In other cases, two-thirds. When it's two-thirds, I'll call that to your attention and also announce whether the two-thirds vote has been passed. Uh, so without going further on this, we'd like to switch to taking up the first article, which is begins with Jonathan of the Select Board. Nat, do we need to um, have Lynn read the top part? Lynn, would you like to read the top part, or would you rather that I do that? Yes. <laughs> Fred
Franklin SS, pursuant to the within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Waitley by posting attested copies of the same at the town office building, post office, and S. White Dickinson Library in said town seven days at least before the date of the meeting as within directed. Edwin M. Zinieski, Constable of Waitley, and it was posted on June 1st, 2021. Thank you, Lynn. You have now been duly warned. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to accept the annual reports of the officers of the town and to hear any other reports of the committee boards and committees. Second. A majority vote is required. All in favor, raise your ballot. All opposed, abstentions. The motion carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow money from time to time in anticipation of the revenue of the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021, in accordance with the provisions of General Law Chapter 44, Section 4, and to renew any note or notes as may be given for a period of less than one year in accordance with the provisions of General Law Chapter 4, Section 17. Second. The article moves to a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions, the Article 2 carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to enter into contracts for goods and services with a duration in excess of three years pursuant to the provisions of General Law Chapter 30B, Section 12B. Second. The article has been put forward as a motion. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions, Article 3 carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the select board to enter into compensating balance agreements with banking institutions having their principal offices in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts during the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2021, as permitted by General Law Chapter 44, Section 53F. Second. Article 4 has been moved. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Article 4 carries. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to apply for, accept, and expend any federal, state, or private grant monies on behalf of the town and authorize the town treasurer with approval of the select board to borrow in anticipation of reimbursement. Second. Article 5 has been moved. We'll proceed to a vote. All in favor? All opposed? abstentions. Article 5 carries. Those are the first five articles, the ones that authorize select board and treasurer to work on our behalf. The next of these have to do with the finance and we will have an opportunity for discussion after each article has been moved prior to seeking a vote. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to establish spending limits for the town's revolving funds as established by the town's general bylaws chapter 46 revolving funds for the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2021 as follows. The dog and licensing and control revolving fund spending limit $2,000. The recreation revolving fund spending limit $20,000. The library revolving fund spending limit $1,000. The Public Hearing Revolving Fund, Spending Limit $10,000. Cordwood Sales Revolving Fund, Spending Limit $2,500. Cemetery Commissioners Revolving Fund, Spending Limit $4,000. Trench Permit, Spending Limit $1,000. Recycling and Solid Waste Revolving Fund, Spending Limit $15,000. Second. Article 6 has been moved. Are there any questions, any discussion on this article? If you have a question, raise your, your card. Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed, abstentions. Article 6 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to fix the salaries or compensation of the elected officers of the town for the fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2021, as follows. And if you follow along in your booklets, you will see the, the salaries listed. Um, unless someone wants to ask me to read them, I will, uh, I will, I will give you give you the right to say no. So, all right. The article has been moved. Is there any discussion? All right. Two percent cola, ninety-eight percent water. All right. All those in favor? All those opposed? 
Article 7 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to appropriate $406,909 or any other sum or sums of money from the Water Department Enterprise Fund to finance the operation of the Water Department for fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2021 as follows. I also will not read it because I know you have it in front of you. Second. Second. All right, Article 8 has been moved and seconded and is now up for discussion. Is there anyone who has a question or a comment regarding the Water Department, Article 8? Seeing none, proceed to a vote. All those in favor of Article 8, please raise your card. Opposed? Abstentions? Article 8 passes unanimously. Okay, Article 9, we now move to Tommy Mahar of the Finance Committee. Article 9, to act on the report of the Finance Committee on the fiscal year 2022 operating budget and to raise an appropriate and or transfer from available funds money for the operation of the town's departments, boards, committees, agencies, and officers for the payment and debt service and for all other necessary and proper expenses for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021. Note, the Water Department Enterprise Fund was appropriated in Article 8. The Finance Committee recommends that the amount shown in the column captioned fiscal year 2022 operating budget be raised or appropriated or transferred from available funds for fiscal year 2022 operating purposes, debt service, and other town expenses. And I'd now I'd like to call Paul Antea from the Finance Committee to walk us through the items on this article. Thank you. Thanks, Nat. Again, I'm Paul Antea. I'm chairperson of the uh, Finance Committee. I'd like to take this a little bit of time to go through each of the departments. Um, we feel this is a good budget. All um, town services are intact. Um, it's a minimal impact on our tax rate. And um, the transparency issue continues. We feel strongly that transparency, town government, especially in the dollars collected and spent, there's nothing more important than transparency. It's like motherhood and apple pie. you got to have it. There are two departments in this budget that we are not 100% on. Yes, we recommended them, and I'll talk about them as I get there, but um, I just want to make you aware. Okay, the first department, general government. General government has $508,626,000 total. That's what you'll be voting on when you vote on the entire amount. It's a $91,658 increase, 21.98%, almost a 22% increase on general government. And as you can see, the majority of that is for a new position in town. And we need that new position because there are a lot of boards, a lot of committees that need extra help. Why? Because for the most part, we don't have enough people volunteering. If we have more people volunteer, that would take the burden off existing individuals. But we don't want things to slip through the cracks. We don't want opportunities for, uh, for monies from the state to lose that. So this position is, in, is very important. Any questions on general government? Any comments? Okay. The next will be cultural recreation services. They have a $135,000, $135,834 budget for $3,627 for 2.74% increase. Relatively small. I'll tell you the concern here, as I spoke about a short time ago. The concern is the Tri Town Beach and the transparency that exists with those monies. We've been trying for years to find 
how the dollars are collected, how the dollars are spent. And that has not been successful. Luckily now, we have a new board. We have one of our select people on that board. And we think moving forward, it will be, um, it will come up to speed. So in regards to the cultural recreation services, any questions? Any comments? There's a, there's a question on the far right. Okay. Um, I just know one agent has dropped the family. I wonder, Matt, if you could please uh, stand up and identify yourself there and, and, and speak uh, a little more loudly, I'm please. Sorry. Ellen Skrosky. Um, can you can you tell us why the Council on Aging has decreased significantly? The Please. The Council on Aging, from my understanding, going back to the meetings, this is what these are the monies that they requested. So, do we have that individual here today who heads the local Council on Aging? I don't see that person. Brian, Brian, is, is there any more you could add to that? So this was, this was the budget they had, that they had submitted. Um, for years, the Council on Aging was a, was a $500 appropriation. And then the Council on Aging um, had an influx of new members, and they had hoped to um, accomplish things like community, um, community outreach, um, they had some expenses for the Waitley, uh, to participate in the Waitley 250th, um, and they were trying to really um, revitalize the Council on Aging. And then the past 12 months happened with COVID. Um, so what I'm looking at in their budget, there's just some decreases um, in terms of uh, postage, um, reusable banner, advertising, and birthday cards. So. Um, it's still $550 more than they typically use, um, but that's, that's the budget that was submitted. Mr. Monterey, if, or if I may, Paul. Yes, please. Um, the Council on Aging is perhaps one of the poster children for the lack of volunteerism. Um, and it's also a very hard committee to volunteer for. Um, if, if, if we got some some active volunteerism within the Council on Aging uh, with some fresh ideas uh, and, and, and some c concepts around how to make Waitley a, 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 a vibrant place to, to, to live for our senior citizens and, by the way, those who are approaching senior citizen age, um, you could see the budget go up. So it, it, it's a function of more volunteers, more money. Fewer volunteers, less money, because they're they're just doing less, and and you know our senior population does what it can, but it's it, it gets harder. Um, so I would I would do a, a, a shout out for anyone who wants to help uh, revitalize the Council on Aging to do so. Um, the the people who ran the Council on Aging for years, you know, like all of us, they 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 they, they got a little old, uh, and they couldn't do it anymore, and that. That happens to all of us. Um, so if anyone would like to volunteer their time and revitalize the Council on Aging, uh, we would love to hear from you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, one last point on the cultural recreation services that I wanted to draw your attention to, that um, the Finance Committee has uh, is very skeptical about, and that's simply the South County Senior Center. And the reason we're skeptical about that, we can follow the dollars, we know what they do. They cannot prove that any Waitley resident uses their services. We've been asking them for this for about four years now. And today's technology, all we're asking them is to keep a list. And they haven't done that. Now, Last year, obviously, COVID. This year, still affected by the whole COVID issue. And we haven't taken a draconian stance on this. But I can, you can rest assured that if it continues, 
we have no choice but to not recommend this to the town. They are taking this out of our hands by not submitting and not showing that the value to Waitley is in the $24,200 that they're asking for from our town. So that's just an FYI. Before I get off this, are uh, there any questions once again? Hi, Beth Lukin from um, Michikowski Circle. Uh, I have a question. Um, the Tritown Beach is still closed, right? Correct. So why are we throwing money at it? We are throwing money at it because there is, um, there is going to be a resurgence. And we, this is kind of like seed money. And if they need to do some painting or need to get people in to assess the quality of the water or the, um, the weeds that are growing there, 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 there will be money there to do that. Because we're very hopeful that in years to come, next year and the year after, we'll have a real facility there that we can be proud of and use and swim. Um, the, M Mr. Edwards. Um, I, I, I joined the Tritown Beach Commission earlier this year um, to give it a complete makeover. Um, I will make no bones about the fact that I think it's a dump. Um, I think it's an embarrassment, and I think it's a, it, it doesn't take advantage of the asset that it should be for the town of Whateley and its residents. Um, and, and, and so that's why I made the, the, the leap of faith that, that I could give it a complete makeover along with other, other new, new people um, on the commission. Um, we, I, I have no intention of just making it what it was. Um, we are finding things out that we didn't know before. Um, it is a nat national heritage site. Um, I don't know how that happens when it was a dry land before the highway went in, but it yet nonetheless is a national heritage site. Um, so we have to figure out how to how to work around those those limitations. But my goal with Tritown Beach is to not just clean the water, uh, make it a swimmable place, uh, improve the sand, um, tear down the current bathhouse and, and put a new bathhouse up, uh, perhaps put in a a larger, more vibrant concession stand, if not a full-fledged restaurant uh, with a liquor license. Um, in the back property behind the Tritown Beach is, is land that Waitley owns. I'd like to perhaps put in tennis courts, basketball courts, and make it almost a club atmosphere for the residents of Waitley to really enjoy. Now, can I do it all? Can I accomplish this? I don't know, but any business plan has to have a vision, and that's what my vision is for the Tritown Beach. Um, and, and, and to really make it a, 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 a destination. Jonathan, uh, the moderator has a question for you. Of all those things you've articulated, how many of them are in this year's budget? Um, the assessment for what is possible is in this year's budget with the possibility of, of the sand replacement and other very minor elements that would allow it to reopen at a clean, at a, of a clean version of what it currently so was. So is it, is it fair to say that this line item in the budget is for the rehab and renewal uh, upgrade of it to bring it back to opening conditions? And an assessment of what's possible. And an assessment of how to proceed. Yeah. All right. Does that answer your question, ma'am, fully? Thank you very much for asking it. I return to Paul and Taya. Okay, let's move on to public health. Public health has an operating budget of $93,900. They're asking for a $6,196 increase, 7.06. The bulk of that is salary for health agent, and we have to comply. This is a very important um, part of the services of this town. Any questions on public health? Okay, next. Public safety. You'll be voting on $405,761. That's an increase of $16,651 for 4.28%. Questions? Comments? Okay. Public works. You'll be voting on $408,700. Increase of $10,218, 4.28%. Questions? 
for 2.56% increase. I got to tell you, that's a deal. Um, any comments? Any questions? Fine. Insurance and benefits, very little that we can do in regards to impacting these numbers, but the, the numbers are what they are. Um, we need to raise $802,266, a $42,000 increase, 5.53%. Questions on insurance and benefits? Okay. On class, yeah. Want me to give more time? Okay. Any questions? No? I think they're good. Thank you. Um, did I say unclassified? No. Okay, unclassified. Operating budget is asking for seventy-one thousand four hundred and fifty-three dollars, four hundred and seventy-two dollar increase, point six six percent increase. Any questions on the unclassified? Portion. Okay. Let's go into the schools. I'll take the schools individually. Waitley Elementary School. Waitley Elementary School is asking for one million eight hundred twenty-nine thousand seven hundred eighty-six dollars. That's a forty-four thousand six hundred two dollar increase for two point five percent. <clears throat> Any questions on Wheatley Elementary School? Okay. Frontier Regional. Frontier Regional is asking for $916,815 from Wheatley. <clears throat> it's a decrease of $64,009 for, again, a decrease at 6.53%. Thank you, Frontier. Okay, um, Franklin County Tech. Yep. Are, are there any questions regarding the uh, Frontier budget? Yeah. Okay. Good pickup. Thanks. Okay, Franklin County Tech asking for $198,869 for a reduction of $30,673, uh, which is a negative 13.36%. <clears throat> Again, thank you, Franklin County Tech. And those are the schools. Any general school question, comment, anyone would like to make? There's one over there. <coughs> Hi, Ginny Mason. Um, is there no kids going to any of the charter schools? Um, they don't have a budget here. That's a How do you pay them? <laughs> what? Uh, How? Uh, I wonder if there's a representative from the school committee who could uh, explain how charter funds are uh, deducted from the school committee budget. Yeah. They're in there. They're in. Uh, not, and not seeing anyone here at the time. Um, I would encourage you to have a discussion with uh, the principal or the superintendent or the chair of the school committee. But it's a direct deduction from the school budget yeah. rather than in the finance budget here. Comes right out. Thank you. Long um, are we off schools? The charter thing? Are we good? Okay. Um, last but not least, uh, long-term debt, $48,660. And um, that's what they're asking for. So... Um, and specifically, it's for excavator and, and the lease of those two items for the highway department. Um, and you can see them there. Any questions about those two items, specifically in long-term debt? Okay. So the entire, what you'll be voting on, again, $5 million, over $5 million budget. The increase, 169000 at 3.23. Now, that is what we're seeing now. Uh, the guesstimate in terms of taxation is um, somewhere na in the neighborhood of, Brian, it's a 15% increase, I mean 15 cent increase 
over last year. And that will, um, that will reflect in, what's that number again? Fifteen oh six. Okay, um, and if you think about that a little bit, um, that's less. That's that's a lower tax rate than what we had in two thousand nineteen, eighteen, and two thousand seventeen. And I look back in two in two thousand three, we had a tax rate of over eighteen dollars per thousand. So. Generally speaking, the services are better, and the taxation is um, adequate, to say the least, and um, that's what we have. I'm going to turn this over to the moderator. All right. Thank you, Paul and Taya. Uh, I know we all mourn the loss of Paul's uh, wonderful PowerPoint presentations that we normally have at this time, and I can only hope that being outside in the in the in the cool evening breeze uh, at least partially compensates for that loss. All right, and as always, I'd like to thank the Finance Committee for their extremely hard work each year preparing this budget. You will notice they are the only committee for which there was a dollar amount not allocated because they work for free. So uh, perhaps some applause for the Finance Committee. And an opportunity for our newest member to introduce herself, please. Hi, my name's Patty Devine. Uh, I live on 5 and 10. All right. We're now, thank you, Patty. We're now going to move to, this has been moved and seconded. We've had discussion. We move to a vote. All those in favor of Article 10, please raise your card. Article 9. Article, Article 9. 9. I'm not sure it was, it was moved. It was All right. moved? That we have to move it in order to have discussion. I, I didn't hear a motion. All right. Uh, would you like to have a second motion? Second. Tommy? Second. Okay. Thank you. Now that we're um, doubly sure that we're ready to spend money, here's your chance to vote to spend money. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Article 9 passes unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Assessors to transfer the sum of $200,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to reduce the tax levy for the fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2021. Second. The Article 10 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Really, not even what is free cash? Everybody knows. <laughs> All right. Then we'll move to a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? Article 10 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $20,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash to the Vehicle Stabilization Fund. Second. Article 11 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we proceed to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Abstentions? Article 11 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to General Law Chapter 70, Section 5B to create a separate stabilization fund to be known as the Town Building Stabilization Fund, the purpose of which is to reserve such sums of money as annual or special town meeting shall vote to appropriate or transfer into it for expenses related to the construction and repair of existing or future town-owned buildings and not for ordinary maintenance, and further vote to transfer the sum of $25,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, into the town building stabilization fund to be authorized by vote under this article. Second. Article 12 has been moved and seconded. It requires a two-thirds vote because it is creating a stabilization fund as do votes that allocate money into or out of stabilization funds. This serves as a firewall for us in terms of our budget and for long-term, and it aids us in long-term planning. Is there any discussion regarding Article 12? 
If not, we proceed to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Extensions? Article 12 it passes unanimously and therefore satisfies the two-thirds vote requirement. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $21,500 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to pay for the purchase of new communications equipment for the police and fire departments. Second. Article 13 has been moved and second. Is there discussion? Communications. All right, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Article 13 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $30,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to pay for the purchase and installation of a backup emergency generator for the town offices located at 4 Sandy Lane. Second. Second. Article 14 is now up for discussion. It's just too nice a day, right? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Article 14 passes unanimously. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $12,000 from available funds for school year 20 free cash to pay for the purchase of a new snow plow to be used by the highway department. Second. Article 15 is moved and seconded. Is there any discussion about snow this lovely day in June? All right, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Article 15 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $21,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to pay for the purchase and installation of a new commercial oven for the cafeteria of the Waitley Elementary School. Second. Article 16 has been moved and seconded. Finally, a truly hot topic. Uh, any discussion? All right. We proceed to a vote. All those in favor, Article 16. Opposed? Article 16 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $45,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to pay for the milling and resurfacing of the driveway and parking lot at the Whaley Elementary School. Second. It's moved and seconded. You've all had a chance to inspect it on the way in. Um, is there any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Extensions? Article 17 passes unanimously. Mr. Was moderator, 18? Mr. moderator, I move no. that the town vote to transfer the sum of $29,000 from available funds, general stabilization fund, to pay for the milling and resurfacing of the driveway and parking lot at the Waitley Elementary School. Second. Okay, Article 18 has been moved and seconded. You'll notice that these, this and the previous article are both about the same item. But because they come from different funds, we had to vote for them separately. And this one, because it comes from a stabilization fund, requires a two-thirds vote. Seeing no request for discussion, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? And all those abstentions? Article 19... 18. 18 passes with one vote in opposition. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town and, vote... Sorry, and therefore, two-thirds vote threshold has been satisfied. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $20,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to pay for the installation of new floor tiling and area rugs at Waitley Elementary School. Second. Article 19 has been moved and second. Any discussion? All right, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? <clears throat> Article 19 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $5,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to pay for repairs and painting to the interior and exterior of the police station. 
Second. Article 20 has been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Is there a preferred paint color? No? Okay, that's up to the discretion of the police department. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Article 20 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to appropriate and transfer the sum of $5,000 from the Water Department Enterprise Fund retained earnings to pay for upgrades to the Westbrook Road pumping station. Second. Um, I'll, sorry, Article 21 is now up for discussion. Seeing no requests, we move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. Anyone opposed? Article 21 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $1,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to pay for crack sealing and repairs to the town offices, driveway, and parking lot. Second. Article 22 is now up for discussion. Seeing no requests, we move to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. Opposed? Article 22 passes with one vote in opposition. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $15,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20 free cash, to be expended for the expenses incurred to comply with the town's obligations under Chapter 253 of the Acts of 2020, an act relative to justice, equity, and accountability in law enforcement in the Commonwealth. Second. Article 23 has been moved and seconded and proceeds to discussion. Are there any questions or comments? Yes, please. Uh, could you wait for the microphone to reach you, please? And uh, kindly identify yourself as well. Brent Chikas, 25 Gray Oak Lane. I'd just like a brief summary of what these um, requirements are to comply, what the town's obligations would be. Thank you. Is there someone who can address that question? Jim? Okay. Good evening. Jim Savini, Chief of Police for the Waitley Police Department. Um, so the compliance issues for the Waitley Police Department are training. So the biggest thing that we're facing right now with the police reform is that it's gonna require all of our part-time officers to attend 200 additional hours of training. Plus we have to purchase some equipment related to our <coughs> body cams um, for software editing and things like that. So when we calculate all those figures, um, we're looking at about $15,000. It's gonna be spread out over three years. So we're most likely gonna be looking for the same things um, next year and the year after until we get all of our officers trained up to the, the new standard. Thank you, Jim, for the explanation. Any further follow-up questions or discussion? Thank you for the question. We'll now move to a vote. All those in favor on Article 23? Anyone opposed? Abstentions? Article 23 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $20,000 from available funds, fiscal year 20, free cash, to be expended for the Waitley 250th anniversary celebration. Second. Article has been moved and second, Article 24. Any questions or discussion? All right, uh, let's proceed to a vote for Article 24. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? All right, Article 24 passes, and we're looking forward to a wonderful Waitley 250th plus one celebration. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town here and act pursuant to General Law Chapter 44B 
on the report of the Community Preservation Committee for the fiscal year 2022 Community Preservation Budget and vote to appropriate or reserve from the Community Preservation Fund a sum of money in the amounts recommended by the Community Preservation Committee for the Committee Administrative Expenses, Community Preservation Projects, and any other necessary and proper expenses in the fiscal year beginning on July 1, 2021, including debt service for any approved Community Preservation Project, with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. The appropriations as follows. From fiscal year 2022, estimated reserves for committee administrative expenses, $9,000. From reserves, from fiscal year 2022, estimated reserves for open space, reserve $20,500. From fiscal year 2022, estimated revenues for affordable housing reserve, $20,500. From fiscal year 2022, estimated revenues for budgeted reserve, $87,000. Debt service from fiscal year 2022, estimated revenues for town hall loan debt service, $43,000. Second. Is it, the Article 25 has been moved and second. Is there any discussion? We therefore will move to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. Opposed? Abstentions? Article 26, Article 25 is passed unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote pursuant to General Law Chapter 44B to appropriate and transfer the sum of $75,000 from the Community Preservation Fund. Unreserved fund, unreserved fund balance for handicapped accessibility improvements and other improvements to the S. White Dickinson Library, including but not limited to the installation of a lift, construction of a handicapped accessible restroom, upgrades to the fire alarm system, and other accessibility improvements. Second. Article 26 is now up for discussion. <laughs> okay, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Article 26 passes unanimously. Mr. <clears throat> Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to General Law Chapter 44B to appropriate and transfer the sum of $21,000 from the Community Preservation Fund budgeted reserves for improvements to the Veterans Memorial Park, including but not limited to installation of additional memorial stones and plaques construction of a stone wall, and the installation of new granite benches and plantings. Second. All right. Article 27 has been moved and second. Is there a discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'd like to ask us to proceed to a vote. Article 27, all those in favor? <clears throat> all those opposed? Article 27 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to return the sum of $274.23 of Community Preservation Act funds being the amount of funds remaining from an appropriation of $15,000 under Article 13 of the December 1, 2016 Special Town Meeting for the purchase of a secure storage vault for the town office building to the Community Preservation Fund Historic Resources Reserve. Second. Article 28 has been moved and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, we move to a vote. Article 28, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? Article 28 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to return the sum of $918.06 of Community Preservation Act funds <clears throat> being the amount of funds remaining from an appropriation <clears throat> of $49,000 under Article 13 of the December 1, 2016 Special Town Meeting for the purchase of a secure storage vault for the Town Office Building to the Community Preservation Fund unreserved, fund unreserved Fund Balance. Second. Article 29 has been moved <clears throat> and seconded. Is there a discussion? It's kind of hard to object to something being under budget and getting money back, right? <laughs> okay, all in favor of accepting the money back. All those opposed? All right, Article 29 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to return the sum of $1,006 
of Community Preservation Act funds, being the amount of funds remaining from an appropriation of $4,500 under Article 27 of the April 30th, 2019 Annual Town Meeting for the restoration of the circa 1938 advertising backdrop curtain owned by the Waitley Historical Society and its mounting on the Town Hall stage to the Community Preservation Fund Unreserved Fund Balance. Second. Article 30 has been moved and seconded. Proceeding to a vote, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? Article 30 passes unanimously. Give yourself a round of applause. You've completed the budget for this year. And before the end of the fiscal year, which is a practice I'm sure we hope our state will emulate. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to designate Poplar Hill Road as a scenic road pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 15C, and further to amend the Waitley General Bylaws, Chapter 148-3, Waitley Scenics Road Bylaw, Paragraph B, to include Poplar Hill Road as a designated scenic road and to authorize the town clerk to insert those words in paragraph B in grammatically correct form. I second that. <laughs> All right, that's been moved and second. Is there a discussion either about the designation or the grammar? Paul? Oh, thanks. Paul Newland, 148 Conway Road, but also bordering Poplar Hill Road and Williamsburg Road and Weber Road. So I'd like to know what difference it makes if it, when a road is made a scenic road. So somebody can answer that question for us, please. In the back, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, Donna Wiley, Historical <laughs> Commission. This is actually a continuation of something we started last year, so I'll repeat myself for those of you who were out here last year. A little bit louder, please. Okay. Um, the uh, state of Massachusetts allows individual towns to designate scenic roads, and the last time the town of Waitley did this was in 1973, so we're actually two years ahead of our 50-year um, target. At that time, greatly yeah. designated Chestnut Plain, um, Haydenville, and Conway Road. There's now a fourth road because North Street was part of Chestnut Plain at that time. Um, we, uh, the historical, I don't know where Keith is. Is Keith here? The, uh, up there. The Historical Commission worked with Keith last year, Keith Bardwell, to talk about um, what that meant for the work particularly his work as tree warden, because the main uh, um, condition <laughs> that being designated a scenic road um, puts in place is that before the town removes <coughs> any trees over a certain diameter, and I think we're now at six inches, or an historic stone wall, from the town's right of way, so this has no bearing on those of you who own private property um, that face on those streets. This is all about the town's right of way. Um, there has to be a public hearing, and, t and Keith actually organizes those. I think it's probably about one a year for tree work generally on the existing historic, um, uh, rather scenic roads. So after we... Um, uh, voted our own town scenic bylaw, which we did a year ago, we uh, started looking at the rest of the town. We looked back at the relevant state bylaw, which is cited in the write-up, and discovered that scenic road really doesn't mean a road that is beautiful, a road that is good to look at. It's all about protecting forest and historic stone walls. And for that reason, we've added three um, which we proposed to you. Actually, the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission have, have signed on to this, Poplar Hill, Weber, and Strip. There are a couple of other things that the Planning Board might want to say, I think. 
Is there anyone from the planning board, Judy? All right, thank you, Donna, for that explanation. And um, can we have a microphone up front, please, for Judy Marklin, the planning board, Raise to your hand, Judy, uh, supplement I don't think that. he can see you. How about a round of applause for the FCAT yeah. volunteers here? I'm Judy Markland um, on the mission and the planning board. And I'd like to, one other just that, that the Scenic Roads gives is when the planning board does a site plan review, which it does for large projects like solar facilities or marijuana cultivation or commercial kinds of properties. One thing that we are to look at is important resources in town and see that they are preserved. And one, one designation on there is a scenic road. So it gives a little sort of extra oomph, I guess. Very technical word. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Uh, are there any further questions or discussion <clears throat> on this item? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Steve Huntley, 51 Weber Road. Um, so, so having this distinction, does it lead to more highway funds? Does it do anything along those lines? Is there someone who'd like to speak to that? So far, we've heard that it uh, protects or at least gives a review to uh, trees and stone walls and that it's a criteria when determining zoning. Is there anyone who can speak to highway funds or anything in that regard? Here's the answer well, is no. I can't speak to highway funds. Okay. It um, but I can say that many of this, well, if I could get the frog out of my throat, I could. <clears throat> Many of the applications for state funding ask about the presence of scenic roads in the areas for which we're applying for money. And we don't know what's going to come down the road. But it's a, sorry, that was a bad joke. <laughs> but, um, but we know that this is a state program and the state respects its own designations. So we think it cannot hurt. That's a, that's a Yes, please. Um, Eversort, do they uh, have to follow these too? I'm concerned about old trees becoming brittle and us losing power. This has to do with the town's right of way. Brian, can you speak to the issue of Eversort on that regard? Um, yeah, this would apply to any, any trees over six inch in diameters. All right, well, so yeah. what it would mean is that Eversort wanted to do work on that tree, it would have a public hearing first. Okay, if there's no further uh, questions or discussion, we'd move to a vote on Article 31. <clears throat> All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, it passes with uh, four votes in opposition. A uh, majority vote has been satisfied. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to designate Strip Road as a scenic road pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 15C, and further to amend the Waitley General Bylaws, Section 148-3, Waitley scenic, by scenic Roads Bylaw, Paragraph B, to include Strip Road as a designated scenic road, and to authorize the town clerk to insert those words in Paragraph B in grammatically correct form. Second. Is there a discussion regarding Strip Road, Article 32? Seeing none, proceed to a vote on Article 32. All those in favor, raise your card. Anyone opposed? There are three votes in opposition. The majority vote has been satisfied. Article 32 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to designate Weber Road as a scenic road pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 15C and further to amend the Waitley General Bylaws, Section 148-3, Waitley Scenics Road Bylaw, Paragraph B, to include Weber Road as a designated scenic road and to authorize the town clerk to insert those words 
in paragraph B in grammatically correct form. Second. Any further discussion regarding Weber Road? If not, we move to a vote on Article 33. All those in favor, raise your hand. If you're opposed. All right, and I, I count perhaps six votes in opposition. Majority vote is required and satisfied. Article 33 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend the Town of Waitley zoning bylaw and zoning map established under Section 171-4 to rezone the following parcels from the Agricultural Residential District 1 to the Commercial District in order to allow for more commercial uses to be carried out on these parcels. Parcel number one, assessor map ID number 06-0-04-3, Egypt Road adjacent to the railroad tracks. Parcel two, assessor's map ID number 12-0-24, 148 State Road. Parcel number three, assessor's map ID number 12-0-24-1, land between State Road and Interstate 91. Second. Article 34 has been moved and seconded. I need to point out two things on some earlier printings. There was a typo in the map ID for parcel number two. The correct ID is 12-0-24, not 12-02-24. Um, my second announcement is a two-thirds vote is required, and a third surprise announcement is if you can't read that 12-0-24, it may be that you dropped your glasses somewhere in the field behind you, and you, um, <laughs> I will hand them over to the uh, town administrator so you can uh, uh, surreptitiously recollect your, uh, your reading glasses at your convenience. Thank you. And open it up for discussion. I see no hands for, oh, there is a hand for discussion. Thank you. James Ross, uh, State Road. Um, regarding the parcel on Egypt <coughs> Road, I have an agreement with Walter and Richard Thayer here to purchase the piece of property for them um, to put up a little shop for my business, JDR Builders, started in this town 22 years ago. I've just exceeded the space at my house, and I want my company out of my backyard, and I intend to put up a commercial building um, to store my stuff. I have no materials get delivered. There's no outdoor storage. Just a nice, neat, clean place to put my stuff. Um, I've spoken with all of the area neighbors, and there's been no objections whatsoever in this. So please support it. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments or discussion? Uh, seeing none, we're therefore will vote. proceed to a vote. Article 34. All those in favor, raise your card. Anyone opposed? See three, four votes in opposition. Um, by the count of the moderator, the two-thirds vote has been, requirement has been satisfied. <clears throat> Article 34 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the town of Whitley zoning bylaws, section 171-8, table of use regulations by inserting a new commercial use designation of trucking and construction equipment in the commercial uses category as shown below. And you can read the designations in, in the various columns of agricultural, residential, all the way through commercial to industrial. Second. There's been, Article 35 has been moved and second. Is there a discussion? Yes, please. I'd like a definition on what trucking and construction equipment is. And there's a lot of people in town that might have a piece of equipment, bobcat, tractor with a backhoe on it, little bucket loader they have. They've had forever non-commercial uses that would have them on their property. Would this make that be banned now? Is there someone who can speak to that, please? From the planning board or select board? Uh, Judy, would you like to speak? Or Don? Don, Don, speak. Gentleman there. Thank you. Uh, 
I'm not crippled enough not to be able to hold it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it basically means um, very large trucks and very large pieces of equipment, front loaders and things like that. We're not looking for any small equipment. Bo probably even bobcats would be fine, but at some point it gets big enough that it's pretty recognizable that it's a large piece of equipment. So it's a somewhat probably available to adjustment, but that's as best as we could as we could do it. We may, if necessary, give a, a more add an, a a, um, a definition into the bylaw at some point in the future. All right, thank you. From Don, we have it's bigger than a bread box and bigger than a bobcat. Is there anyone else who wants to uh, follow up with a question or discussion, clarification? There are question, uh, hands raised over there, please. Teresa Belisle, 190 Christian. Does that? Teresa, your voice uh, cut out. Oh. Try holding it more like an ice cream cone. Okay. Does that include tractor trailers? Am I? A stop and drop all those the store so you, we better be careful what we're asking for because they go to the agricultural farms to pick up stuff so they would be now be banned from Christian Lane no. No. Uh, hold on Don please on get for the microphone Don thank you only you just can't put them on your property unless you're uh, in commercial one commercial industrial or industrial Drive by and go pick up. Is that correct? Got it. Loading, unloading, pick up, no idling, no yeah. parking. Okay. Make a comment, Fred Rolaski. I think there should be a definition. Uh, a little of louder, Fred, please. Fred Rolaski. I think there should be a definition of trucking. To say a large truck. What's a large truck? You know that that's that's very subjective, and it's going to come down to, it's going to come down to the the planning board or ZBA or the building inspector who issues the permit to decide is this a large truck or is this kind of trucking activity uh, allowed in these zones uh, for as far as for trucking there is nine different classes of trucks that are universally recognized by by traffic engineering traffic experts highway departments there's nine cla vehicle classes of trucks if we're going to limit trucking we should define which of the nine vehicle classes of trucks are we allowing in a commercial zone? Additional questions, comments? Fred, do you um, happen to know the um, particulars of that, of those classifications? Yeah, yes, there are uh, FERCOG, Franklin County Regional Council of Governments, uses them classifications when they do a vehicle classification study that they recently done on, on uh, it was Christian Lane they've done some on Chestnut Plain Road uh, I think they, they did one here outside of the school this year the nine are part of a 13 there's actually 13 vehicle classes nine of them are trucks so if you look on their site or you can get the reports from our town office of what them classes specifically, how, how they're identified. But that is a nationally recognized identification for trucks. All right, I see um, Judy has a hand. Is there anybody else who wants to participate in discussion? Okay. Fred, in, in response to your, uh, really needs to be up high. I think in general, most of the uses on the table of use are not specifically defined. And what we're talking about is a commercial use. So it, it's a trucking business or a trucking equipment business. And I think in general, my perspective is it's better not to have too specific a definition because the control is with the ZBA to determine with a special permit whether this business is appropriate for that location. And there might be some location where one truck 
trucking kind is appropriate and one not. So that would that would be my response. Yeah, can I jump in? Uh, well, no, there's one more yeah. question first, and then you can have the microphone. <clears throat> Keith Bardwell from Westbrook Road. I was just going to suggest that perhaps that this be tabled until it gets um, further discussed. Um, I definitely understand what everybody's talking about when it talks about the different classifications of trucks, and I think there's just it needs to be a little clearer before we vote on it. All right, we have one final comment in the queue, but then a motion to lay on the table is not deb debatable. It requires a two-thirds vote to do so. So, Jonathan, please. I, I guess I'm going to agree with Keith. Um, what we want to avoid is, is uh, objectivity in, in the decisions that are, that are being made by the ZBA or by the building inspector or by, by other people. Um, I, I think we want to avoid having the perceived, whether it's accurate or not, at least we, we, want, we want to avoid the perceived favoritism of one person making a, 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 a request for uh, a special permit as opposed to somebody else. And, and that discussion will inevitably arise um, without a little bit more specificity. So I, I guess I will encourage my, and, and that says nothing to take away from the work that the planning board's done. I just think that it requires a little bit more more work and thought. And by the way, involvement by the people out here um, on town meeting floor, as opposed to not attending the, 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 the hearings that the planning board will host. Um, if, you, if you have something to say about how this should look in its final format, um, you should attend the, the, uh, the public hearing that the planning board uh, creates. Otherwise, the planning board's running blind in terms of public sentiment until they get to a town meeting when it's oftentimes too late. So I, I, I would I would recommend that we that we kick this back to the planning board and the rest of the town. Jonathan, for their are you therefore seconding the motion to lay on the table? I am. I will. Was that a motion? That well, said? It, the only way you are allowed to speak is if you were seconding that motion. I forgot to tell you that. Why so, is that? It's just the rule, so I'm hoping but that can, you will, I hoping can, all you need to do okay. is say, I therefore second the motion put forward by Keith Bardwell. I, it, it, okay, but it wasn't a motion that, but okay, I'll yeah. second the motion yeah. by <laughs> Keith Bardwell. When you, <laughs> Keith, did you or did you not propose to lay on the table this article? All right, uh, now a formal motion. Would you like to make a formal second? Sure. All right, all right. So, therefore, to keep it legit, um, this is what happens. To put this on the table would mean to take no further action on this article today. And in order to do that, there would have to be a two-thirds vote uh, in favor of putting it on the table. If that vote passes, then we take no further action. If it fails, we move to a vote on the... Uh, article itself, and for it to pass, it would require a two-thirds vote. Now, at this point, I think that I'm going to need some counters here, and so uh, I'm looking at the mathematically uh, nimble and capable residents of the intersection of Weber Road, Poplar Road, um, <laughs> <laughs> Conway Road, and one other to be named later, uh, Paul Newland and Claudia Le Claudia, if you would uh, also um, be my counters, please. Thank you. All right. So we're now dealing with the motion to lay on the table, or table Article 35, which requires a two-foot. If you are in favor of laying on the table, that is taking no further action, raise your card. Excuse me. Is there any debate regarding it the motion? It is not debatable. I was looking to clarify what yeah, is yeah. the status of the law now oh. with regard to the, that equipment. It, it's, there's no further discussion. There's no further debate. Um, I was remiss in letting Jonathan go on um, earlier. Uh, the other things, um, it's not amendable. However, it can be put up for a vote for reconsideration. Let's not try that. Okay. All those in favor of laying on the table and taking no further action, uh, please raise your card.
All right, keep your arms up. This is the exercise part of the... <laughs> Right. If you feel like one muscle is going to get too strong, you could um, switch from hand to hand, but please keep the ballot up as you do so. And the number in favor is, please? 29 plus 43. I can. It's 72 in favor of laying on the table. All those opposed to the motion to lay on the table. Ten. All right. Seventy-two out of eighty-two is eighty-seven point eight percent. This exceeds two-thirds, and so no further art action will be taken on this article today. We therefore move to Article 36. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend <coughs> the Town of Waitley Zoning Bylaw, Section 171-17, Site Plan Review and Review of Large Developments to modify the submission requirement for site plan documents as shown below. And you, uh, I won't read it all out. The portions that are italic underlined are <coughs> proposed as an addition. Anything struck is proposed to be deleted. Second. Uh, Article 36 is now open for discussion. All right, we wore ourselves out on the last one there. <laughs> <coughs> Let's move to a vote. All in favor? All opposed? I count two votes in opposition, and I declare that it has passed. Article 36 has passed by the two-thirds vote requirement. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend the Town of Whateley Zoning Bylaw, Section 171-28.6, Adult Use Recreational and Medical Marijuana Establishments, by inserting a definition for indoor marijuana cultivation in subsection B definitions to authorize the town's ability to inspect and monitor operating facilities and by inserting a new paragraph 16 inspections and monitoring in subsection D site development permitting standards and application and renumbering the remaining paragraphs in subsection D as shown below which is in your packets second all right, Article 37 has been moved and seconded. Is it up for discussion? If there's anyone with a question or comment, please raise your card. All right, there is one in the back. Hi, Justin Davis, 18 Gray Oak Lane. I was just wondering, is this is for private growing, or is this commercial, or is it both, or? The question is regarding private versus commercial. Yes. Uh, microphone, please, for Don. It's just commercial. Is that what you're saying? OK. Does that answer your question fully? Yes, it does. Thank you. OK. Uh, are there more questions? Please go ahead. Aisle. And what I noticed is there's no uh, mention of light. And having gone through living on Christian Lane with my house being lit up day and night, I want to make sure this isn't going to happen again. Is anything in this article speaking to that particular concern? No. And my house was lit up like the night sky from day until night, all night long. And nothing was ever done but I except the town does have a zoning bylaw about light, but it's not mentioned in this uh, article. Don, please. Yeah, this um, is only to define a couple of things. Uh, when the planning board 
does a site plan review for marijuana things, mm -hmm. one of the things we do not allow is light that can be seen after 7 p.m. And, and that's in the existing, those are, that's already in the existing bylaw. All right, so uh, we've clarified what this bylaw for marijuana cultivation is about. It sounds like a resident may wish to visit the planning board to ask for an amendment on more general um, rules or regarding uh, cultivation of, of things in general. Um, if, if someone would want to propose a change or an, uh, an article for a future meeting, what would be the way you would recommend uh, they proceed? Simply call me and say you would like to get on the agenda for the next meeting. All right. Anybody want to be on the agenda for the planning board, please contact Don Suter. Thank you there. All right. Seeing no further uh, questions or comments, I'd like to move to a vote on Article 37 regarding marijuana cultivation to amend the existing statutes. All those in favor, raise your hand, raise your card. All those opposed? Uh, it seems like the article is passed unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the town of Whitley zoning bylaw section 171-37 terms defined to expand the definition of accessory apartment so as to allow a 600 foot square square foot dwelling unit in a new accessory structure as shown below and and you can read for yourself the areas that are um that are lined through uh, are taken out and the areas that are underlined with italics are, are added thank you and i neglected to mention article 37 although obvious since it passed unanimously i need to state that a two-thirds vote requirement was met so please add that to the minutes okay we're now um taking up for discussion article 38 regarding second uh, and that's right now that there's a second uh any questions or discussion regarding article 38 All right. Well, then let's uh, proceed to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 38 passes unanimously and therefore satisfies the two-thirds vote requirement. And that satisfies our obligations as a legislature for the budget and laws. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Moderator, I move uh oh we've got a hand up what do you want to do mr moderator you moved you you're moving to adjourn yeah. all I right second then <laughs> all right uh it's not debatable <laughs> all those in favor opposed we are adjourned thank you for being part of the annual town meeting